Raise up those hands and let me see. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We bless your holy name. We glorify you. We exalt the name of Jesus. Tonight, Lord, is your night. Your night to move. Your night to save. Your night to heal. Your night to deliver. Your night to, your night to touch every life. And I pray, Lord, tonight, nobody will go back home empty-handed. Your people will rejoice. Our people who have invited will rejoice. Touch everyone, Lord, and do wonders in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I'm looking at Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. The book of Daniel talks about power. You're thinking about the power of God? It's in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel talks about wonders. You're looking for the wonders of the Lord? You open to Daniel, it's right there. The book of Daniel talks about miracle. You're looking for miracle. And you're looking for how to get into the miracle. Open the book of Daniel. You'll find all kinds of miracles. In fact, from chapter 1 to the very end, miracle upon miracle. And tonight, the power has come upon your soul. The wonders have come to you tonight. And the miracles have come to you tonight. In Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. At the latter part of verse 15. Here Nebuchadnezzar was talking to believers. At that time he had not known. What power God can manifest. If you are a believer tonight, I praise God for you. No power can overcome you. No power can destroy you. If you are not a believer yet, I'm going to show you how to cross the line. And then you become a believer. And from that moment in your life, you will go anywhere and no power will be able to suppress you. You see here, we're looking at it in verse 15. Here, down here, we have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then we have Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was asking a question. He said, but if ye worship not, he said, I've raised up an idol. And I want everybody to worship that idol. And he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You say you are believers. Any believer there tonight? I said any believer there tonight? Every power against your life will fall down today. Every weapon that is pointed at you will be crushed in Jesus' name. He said, if ye worship not, ye shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a bony furry furnace. And then he said, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Have you faced such a challenge? The people tell you that this is against you. Have you faced such a challenge that they say all these parts of darkness, they are militating against your life? Have you faced such a question that they say this calamity upon you, this sickness upon your life, and this power of darkness waging war against you? They say, ah, you think you are praying. They say, prayer, prayer, prayer. You think prayer can solve this one? tonight the Lord will show you that prayer has power. Faith has power. And that yoke in your life. Tonight is that night it will be broken. And the cause in your life. Tonight is your night. 
and to be taken away in Jesus name he said who is that God I can answer it's the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob who is that God I can tell you it's the one that opened the Red Sea who is that God I can declare to you it's the one that made Pharaoh and all his child to perish in the Red Sea who is that God is the one that brought water out of the rock I said who is that God is the God that conquered Goliath that Goliath in your life tonight is your night I'm looking at somebody there he carry up miracle I said tonight is your night this man this man that not known who our God is the creator of the heavens and the earth the one that raises the dead the one that heals the sick the one that opens blind eyes the one that points so that lame man they rise up and walk and power will come into your joints the one that heals the, the people that have madness madness will go away all those chains will be taken away from your life tonight he said who is that god is the one that cleanses the leper it's the one that said lazarus come forth and lazarus will come forth you are coming forth tonight all your chains are going to be broken all those fetters are going to be broken and when god says yes in your life nobody can say no when god says yes in your life nebuchadnezzar cannot say no pharaoh cannot say no and those enemies of righteousness and progress cannot say no who is that god that shall deliver you out of my hand shadrach meshach and abednego answered somebody there you will answer you will answer god's call you will answer the challenge you become a believer and nothing will drive you back anymore you'll be able to face any challenge of life you'll be able to say i believe in the lord somebody there i believe in the lord somebody there i believe in miracle somebody there i believe in prayer shadrach meshach and abednego answered and said to the king oh nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer thee in this matter if it be so you think you have power if it be so you think you can destroy if it be so you think you depend on magic if it be so you think you're an emperor if it be so you think there's wickedness in your heart and wickedness in your blood if it be so you think that you want to drink our blood if it be so you think you're making a fire and you're going to throw us inside if it be so you think you have the final say in my life you think that fire is for me you think you can cut short, cut short the life of Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego? If it be so, our God, everybody shout, our God. Somebody there shout, our God. Our God whom we serve is able. That's enough. My God is able. He's able to save that's enough my god is able he's able to heal that's enough my god is able he's able to deliver that's enough my god is able is able to give children to the barren that's enough my god is able is able to break every yoke congratulations you are here tonight you will see it in your body you will see it in your mind you'll see it in your life yokes are being broken tonight i say yokes are being broken tonight in your heart it will break that yoke 
In your body, he'll break that yoke. In your business, he'll break that yoke. Upon that little child, he'll break that yoke. Upon that woman, he'll break that yoke. You, you will see it tonight. You will jump for joy. And I say, where is miracle? You say, Pastor, look at me here. There's a miracle there. I said there's a miracle there. I said there's a miracle there. Because our God is able. Able to deliver us. From thy bony furry furnace. And he will deliver us. He will. Somebody there, he will. Somebody there, he will. He will deliver us out of thine hands, O king. They told you in the dream, you saw they tied you up. They said that's final. Except you come and you bow and you do sacrifice and you make this ritual. They said final. I came to you tonight to apply the power of God to your life and to break that yoke right there in your life. You're free. Somebody there said you're free. I'm talking to you tonight on great deliverance from the Almighty God. Great deliverance from the Almighty God. I, I've read the book of Daniel for you. I read it on your behalf. So that you'll not have to go through the trouble of reading chapter 1, chapter 2, or to chapter 12. I've discovered something that is for you. The key is already here now. You will open that door. The key is available. I got it from this book of Daniel. I see why people are bound. I see why people suffer. I see why people are crying. I see why people are oppressed. I see why people are poor. I see why people are barren. I see why people are oppressed. I see the receipt. Then I saw the way. Then I see the door opening. And then the Lord has sent me to call you. He says, come out of your dungeon. Look at the door. Come out of that place. And then I'll point it to you. I'll tell you now what I discovered here. And then as you go through this door, I see somebody coming out of darkness. I see somebody coming out of dungeon. I see somebody coming out. They just put you there and they lock you up there. I see your padlock being opened today. I discovered, I discovered three things here. Number one, the defilement. The defilement. Go through Babylon. And go from King uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And go to all the princes. And go to all their musicians. And go to all the astrologers. And go to all the people that you find in Daniel. The reason why there is oppression in the world. The reason why they're suffering in the world. I see here. It is defilement. And then I see the door. Number two is the decision. It's the door of decision. Somebody there is going to be free tonight. Am I talking to anybody here tonight? Freedom. I said freedom. Help me, help me. Shout it out. Freedom. Freedom has come. Number two, I see a decision. The person that decides, that says enough is enough. Enough is enough. The door will open to you. You will come out of darkness. You will come out of all their chains. I see you coming out. I see you coming out. Decision. Number one, tell me out there. Tell me out loud. That is uh, defilement. Number two, decision. Number three, deliverance and dominion. You will overcome. Don't give up. You will overcome. Don't say, I'm finished. 
a new door is opening. Power is coming to you today. And the Lord, when he opens the door, and you say, that door is open for me. It must remain all the goodness of God that you have been waiting for. All the promises God has given you that this year will be the best year you ever lived in your life. The month of fulfillment has come for you. I said the month of fulfillment has come for you. Deliverance and dominion. Remember? Number one. Number two. Number three. Number one. The defilement of the lost. The defilement of the lost. Those who are lost. The people, they, they are lost in darkness. Babylon is a large place. Babylon is a defiled place. And this world is like Babylon. And Babylon is suppressing people. Babylon is sucking them in. Babylon, it's a system. And anybody that comes to this world, it sucks them up sucks them up it sucks up your brain you're not able to think for yourself it sucks up your mind you're not able to decide for yourself it sucks up your life there's no independence in your life as soon as you come into this world as soon as you come into babylon it sucks people up the moment shedak meshach and abednego and daniel and they came to babylon it sucks them up into their system. And that's why we're here tonight. Every evil thing that sucked you up, that thing will vomit you out. You are sucked into a dungeon. You are sucked into magic. You are sucked into occultism. Hey, look, look, Daniel, I said I've read it for you. In chapter 2, I discover anger and fury. Nebuchadnezzar became furious. He said, I have something. I have a dream. If you cannot interpret the dream, Nebuchadnezzar, that's your dream. I'm not involved in your life. I didn't give you the dream. What's the matter with you? He said, if I don't have peace, you'll not have peace. If I'm not happy, you'll not be happy. I'm confused, you're going to be confused. If you don't solve my problem, I didn't create your problem. He, he was so angry. Babylon is a city of anger. I don't need to tell you over here in your land, in your community. That one is angry. That one is furious. They take the bottle and break the bottle. You have never, you're just passing by the way. And if their anger and their fury comes across you, they break your head. They don't respect any police. They don't respect any law and order. When that thing comes, anger has sucked them up. And then I see in Babylon, occultism. Occultism. You come to Babylon, there is occultism there. They call them astrologers. They call them astronomers. They call them magicians. Occultism was at a very height in Babylon. Look at the community in which you are living. Look at occultism in that corner. Look at secret cult in that corner. And that's what brought the defilement. The defilement of the lost. You come to Babylon. There's idolatry. And Nebuchadnezzar said, small, small idols. He collected all of them together. All the gold in the land. And he made a gigantic, gigantic idol. He said, this will be the headquarters of idolatry. Look at your Babylon around you there. Look at idols. Look at shrine. In daylight. And see what is happening. And Nebuchadnezzar said, he will worship. His family will worship. And everybody that comes to this land. They said they declare holiday. 
They say it's a, it's a day for ritual. It's a day for festival. And they say anybody, foreigner or anybody, coming from anywhere, if you don't worship this one, we're going to cast you to the furnace of fire. Look at how they force people over there in our community. And you say, no, I am a church goer. They say, okay, if you will not worship with us, bring your money. Bring your contribution. You must contribute. If you don't contribute, it's like you bought something from them. And you didn't buy anything from them. And they're knocking at your door. Your money. What kind of money? Uh, idol money. Idol money. Because they said they had caught us of idolatry and then you come to babylon there's blasphemy there you find blasphemy uh, have you seen them have you had them in that drinking parlor there have you heard their blasphemy have you heard how they take the bible and they take the songs of the church and then they'll be singing it over there they turn it upside down and then they make the songs of the church a kind of media for idolatry and for adultery and for fornication. As you come to Babylon, you find wickedness at its height. And you find violence at its height. And, and that's where we are. That's why we're suffering. But thank God today, we're coming out of this defilement. I said you are coming out of this defilement. The defilement in this land. The defilement in this community. It's like it's affecting everybody. But somebody there will be like a shade rock tonight. There's an Abednego there tonight. There's a Meshach there tonight. And then you make up your mind. You're taking a decision. Decision. Everybody shout decision. I cannot hear you decision. You see over there, there was immorality. Uh, have you read the book of Daniel before? Here is Belshazzar now. And he collected all the instruments in the house of God. He, he, he was not an ordinary drink drinker. A drinker of beer. A drinker of alcohol. A drinker of wine. He, he, he was not satisfied to drink ordinary lead from his own cup. He said, like, go take all those things they use in the house of God. That we got out of Judah. The one they used to serve their Passover drink. And then in the days of today, what they used to do for Holy Communion. He like, said, go take all those things. He, 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 was, he was a blasphemous drunkard. Uh, you know how many concubines say that? You know how many wives he had? You know how many visitors were invited? And they all came. And this is the land in which we're living. They will not come to church. No, but they'll go to all these places of idol worship. And the system is sucking in the young people. It's sucking up all those teenagers. And then you see them boys and girls. And you are there tonight. That defilement will lead to destruction. Because that day came. That this Beshazzar. He was drinking. And he was blaspheming the name of the Lord. And the hand of God came from heaven. And wrote in a language he didn't understand. And wrote a writing he didn't understand. Fear came upon him. His knees began to knock together. A day is coming, a day is coming that the people of this world, they'll move out of defilement because they don't pass through the door of decision. They don't go through the door of decision. They're not like you tonight because tonight you are a man of decision. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? You're a woman of decision. And with you, even though you have been defiled, even though things have gone wrong but you come tonight out of defilement and you go through the door of decision 
something good will happen to you. Something good is coming your way. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. You will not perish with them. You will not die with them. You will not be judged with them. Belshazzar, Belshazzar. He avoided the door of decision. And the hand came from heaven. And wrote a language he didn't understand. He called all the magicians to interpret. Can you imagine those who are telling occultic people in what they call church to come and interpret Bible for them? Can you imagine somebody, they say they are in church and they call secret society people on Sunday to come and read Bible to them and interpret the Bible to them? Lay reader, lay reader, or in what they call church, in secret called Sunday, coming to teach Sunday school. The priest that is in occult is him. He even he asks the waste man while he's trying to open the Bible and he's not talking about Jesus. Is it a pretty? Can you imagine that? And so Beshazzar called all the people, astrologers and magicians, occultic people. He said, come, interpret for them. Magician will not interpret Bible for me. I don't know about you. A occultic man will not lay hands on my head. I don't know about you. They said there's one woman there, he rubs people with her oil in their stomach. Uh, that woman, a witch, will never do anything like that. I don't know about you. And, and so they could not give the right interpretation. And then here comes Daniel. He said that trichin is from heaven. He said you have weighed and you have found wanting. You have weighed and you have found wanting. He passed on from defilement to damnation. From defilement to damnation. The door was open. The door of mercy. The door of salvation. The door of forgiveness. The door of decision. He couldn't see the door. Thank God tonight I see the door. Thank God tonight I see the door in front of you. The door of decision. You will escape. I said you will escape. Who am I talking about? I said you will escape. You will not die. You will not be destroyed. That damnation will pass over you in Jesus name. Because when I see the blood. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. When I see the blood. I'm talking about the blood of the lamb. When I see the blood. I'm talking about Jesus who went to the cross of Calvary to die for you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The door of decision. And then, as you see that door. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? After all the defilement in Babylon. How can we escape? Number two now. The decision. The decision. Now, there are many kinds of decisions. There are some people that take a decision just for today. There are some people that take a decision just for the moment. And the generation in which we are living, they do not know the value of decision. See these young people. They decide to go to school. And then after spending about a few months there, I see them under the bridge. I see them on the road. And I say, why are you not in school? Said I decided to change. They cannot take a decision and follow it through. Look at that people. They call them couple. They went to the altar just about a few months ago. And now, since they took the decision to marry one another, one year has not passed. This one is living there. That one is living over there. There is a spirit that is scattering them. There's a speed that will break their decision. This generation of people, they don't know about decision. 
That's why I come to you tonight. Something will come inside you. Power will come inside you. Number two, the decision of a lifetime. The decision of a lifetime. A decision you take. And that decision goes up for one week. And for one month. And for one year. And the decision is still there. Now you are young. You take that decision. And then you are old. Decision is still there. The decision of a lifetime. That is why you'll find. The people that got miracle. The people that got transformation. You find them in the book of Daniel. And they were people that had the decision of a lifetime. Listen to one of them. And it's in uh, Daniel chapter 1. And it's in verse 8. And it says, but Daniel purposed in his heart. But Daniel purposed in his heart. There are some decisions that come out of sentiment. There are some decisions that come out of follow, follow. There is a decision that comes out of a temporary sentiment. But there's a decision that comes from the head. It's just okay, that's what they said. They said, stand up. I stand up. Raise up your hand. I raise up my hand. They say, come out. I come out. A decision from the head. But something from inside your heart very deep rooted in your heart is planted in your heart is coming out of the depth of your soul that's a decision it's a decision that mixes with your blood a decision that goes in your veins a decision that affects your mind a decision from the top of your to the tip of your toe a decision in your heart in your soul in your mind in your spirit and you are a bundle of decision. My whole life, my whole soul, I come with this decision. The decision of a lifetime. And Daniel purposed in his heart. He said, no matter where I am, the decision I have made, the decision that came out of me today, in Babylon, in Rome, in Judah, in Jerusalem, in Samaria, this is a decision of a lifetime. It says today, during the week, this month, next month, this is a decision of a lifetime. And Daniel purposed in his heart. I do not the, the same about Shedda, Meshach, and Abednego decision at the time of trouble decision in a time of trauma decision in a time of persecution when the Kadnezer said is it true is it true Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that you will not bow down to my idol and now if you make up your mind if you will change now that you see my face and you see the color of my face. Now that you see my fury. If you will change. That will be alright. But if not. I will throw you into the fire. Oh the same Nebuchadnezzar. Don't worry yourself. We made a decision of a lifetime. Up on the mountain. The decision is there. Down in the valley, the decision is there. Before the fire of Nebuchadnezzar, the decision is there. We will not bend. We will not bow. We will not surrender. We will not submit. These knees, these knees will, leave, will kneel down to the God of heaven. No more idol. No more blasphemy. No more drunkenness. No more defilement. The decision of a lifetime. Daniel had another challenge. He was a man of prayer. Like from tonight, 
you'll be solving your problems with prayer. I said from tonight, and the moment you call, God will answer you. I said God will answer you. I'm talking to men and women of decision. Those who know that heaven is greater than earth. That God is greater than Satan. The magicians are nothing in the sight of the ministers of God. And then you have made up your mind. I'm a man of decision. I'm a woman of decision. All your problems will answer your soul by prayer. That sickness will vanish away. That madness will vanish away. That oppression will vanish away. And then they said nobody must pray. They said 30 days, one month. Nobody will ask anything from God Almighty. They said anything you are going to ask, you will ask from the king. Ah, the king doesn't have salvation. The king does not have redemption. The king does not have the key that opens heaven. And that's what I need. The king does not know about miracle. The king does not have wonders. The king does not know about supernatural. And that's what I'm looking for. And Daniel said, I am a man of decision. All your conspiracy, all your evil, all your plan and plotting, I'm going to trample over everything. You will walk on the devil. You will walk on those demons. All the oppression, all the applause will walk over them. Because you are a man of decision. Do I have any man of decision there? I said, do I have any woman of decision there? And then you look at them face to face. I've made up my mind. I've made up my mind. They, they said they are going to open up a den of lions. All the lions in your life, they are crushed tonight. And then he went to pray. That's what I love about a man of decision. They said, don't pray, I will pray. They said, don't read the Bible, I will read the Bible. They said, don't go to a Bible-believing church, that's exactly where I'm going. They say, don't mention the name of Jesus, I mention that name. And then they say, aha, uh -huh, we saw him, we saw him. And then they went to the king. They said, that man, be very careful what you do to a man of decision. Tonight, as you become a man of decision, and you become a woman of decision, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Every mouth that is opened against you, you will condemn. It's the heritage of the righteous. And the righteousness of me, says the Lord. And then they caught Daniel. Oh, what a pity. Uh-uh, don't pity Daniel. He's an overcomer. Don't pity Daniel. He's more than a conqueror. Don't pity a man of decision. He's coming out. Because from decision, he'll come to deliverance. From decision, he'll come to dominion. Then they locked him up in the lion's day. And when the lions saw him, they thought he was their friend. And they, they spread themselves like a great carpet. And Daniel slept all through the night. And the king in his palace could not sleep. Early in the morning, he woke up. And then he came and he said, Daniel, servant of the living God, is the God whom you serve, able to deliver you from the lions. And Daniel spoke out. You will speak out. And Daniel spoke out. My sister, it is your turn. My brother, it is your turn. I'm telling you, from today, you are an overcomer. From today, you're more than a conqueror. You will speak out the voice of victory and the voice of joy and the voice of power and the voice of authority. And Daniel spoke out. He says, O king, live forever. Uh, that, that's what they tell them. He said, live forever. He said, my God, my God, 
it was a personal knowledge my god it was a personal experience my god it was a personal deliverance my god i sent his angel and he shot the lion's mouth he didn't shot 10 lions and then keep only one mouth open all those lions in your life they are shut up all those sickness in your life they are gone in jesus name Every big problem, every little problem, every moderate problem tonight is your night. Man of decision, woman of decision, they are solved in Jesus' name. And the king said, Come out. And he came out. And they examined him. There was no scratch in his body. That day has come for you. No fire will burn you. No paw of the lion will scratch you. No conspiracy of enemies will destroy you. Number one, the defilement of the lost. Number two, the decision of a lifetime. Number three now, the deliverance by the Lord. The deliverance by the Lord is coming to you. You will come out through that door. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the way. The truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And as you come out of defilement tonight. And you say, I enter in. Welcome. You will enter to the kingdom of God. And then you will forgive all your sins. You say, I have not been like Daniel. Tonight is the starting point. I've not been like Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego. Tonight is a starting point. Your victory is starting tonight. Your deliverance is starting tonight. Your dominion is starting tonight. The deliverance by the Lord. Remember Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego? They threw them into the fire. And the flame of the fire was so intense and serious. The men who threw them there, they were bunched down and bunched to death. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they got into the fire and then they stood up and they were walking. And then somebody, somebody, I said somebody, if you know the Bible, I said somebody, what's his name? Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. Nebuchadnezzar rose up. He said, let me see the ashes of those people. Enemies will not see your downfall. Enemies will not see your defeat. Enemies will not witness your death. New life is coming to you today. New power is coming to you today. The anointing that breaks the yoke is coming in your life. All the fire of Nebuchadnezzar will be neutralized in your life. And he looks inside his furnace. They were not burnt. They were not lying down. They were standing up. And then they were walking. Majestically, the people that conquered fire. And the people that conquered the fury of Nebuchadnezzar. And the people that conquered in the furnace. You know, when you come to the Lord, when you stand in the Lord, from today, nothing will conquer your life anymore. Anything they throw at you, there is an invisible wall. Before that thing gets to you, it will strike that wall. That sin will stop right there. Occultism is neutralized tonight. The power of evil is neutralized tonight. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Tell me, did we not cast three people into the fire? He said, Yes, O king. He said, I see four. He said, One, two, three, four. I recognize that's Shadrach. I recognize that's Meshach. I recognize that's Abednego. 
Look at this other one. And the appearance of the fourth one. That's your savior. And the appearance of the fourth one. That's your deliverer. And the appearance of the first one. That's your redeemer. It's like unto the son of God. It's there tonight. I said it's there tonight. I said it's there tonight. You make up your mind. It will hold your hand. Without him. Your life will be a misery. Without him. Your life will be filled with suffering. Without him. Your life will be oppressed and depressed and destroyed. But with him, he comes from heaven. And there is forgiveness. He comes from heaven. And there is freedom. He comes from heaven. And there is deliverance. He comes from heaven. And there is miracle. He comes from heaven. And there is dominion. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the living God, they said, come out. And they came out of the fire. Praise the Lord. Somebody there said, praise the Lord. Have you cried? Have you wept? Have you suffered? You're coming out. Those tears will dry up. Those evil things will stop in your life. All the magic will stop in your life. All the powerful cultism will stop in your life. Deliverance today. Dominion today. Freedom today. A miracle is coming your way. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They came out. And the king himself examined them. And everybody examined them. They couldn't see any hurt of the fire. That many can many can see you have in your hand. A miracle is coming your way today. And then you'll go back to the hospital. They will examine you over and over. And they will not see any trace of sickness, infirmity anymore. I'm talking about what Jesus will do for you. I'm talking about what healing will do for you tonight. I'm talking about what deliverance will come to you tonight. I'm talking about the deliverance we're going to have tonight. And then they came out. You know, out of that, that gave them now promotion. Promotion. The same Nebuchadnezzar that said, who is that God? He now turned around. He said, I've never seen a God like this before. That can deliver like this anywhere. Your enemies will confess. Your enemies will publicize. They are the people to take your testimony. And they'll tell everybody around. Because deliverance is coming to you tonight. You know, Daniel, the, the king also said, Daniel, servant of the living God, come out. He came out. And all those liars did not touch him at all. And somebody said, oh, you know what happened. The lions were not hungry. When Daniel was there, the Daniel, you know, the lions had just gone for hunting. And uh, they had a lot of animals. They had eaten. They were so full. They couldn't even touch Daniel. They, they were not hungry. And so the king said, if they are not hungry, all those people that conspired against Daniel, all the enemies of Daniel, they rounded them up. And they threw them into the lion's lair. Were the lions hungry? I said, were the lions hungry? When they see your enemy, they will be hungry. When they see all your detractors, they'll be hungry. You're coming out of that dungeon. No matter how hungry those evil spirits are. They say they want to suck blood. They're looking for blood. And you are passing by. You stand up and squat your shoulder. A daughter of the king is passing on. 
and the son of the king is passing on from today nobody will suck your blood no matter how thirsty they are because the spirit of the conqueror is coming upon your life and then when all those other people that don't have any protection when they pass on the people that don't know Jesus when they pass on and come and see them the lions will crush them that's what I'm calling you today that will be a man of decision and then you'll come to deliverance the deliverance by the Lord in that deliverance there's salvation it will forgive all your sin it will set you free from your sin in that deliverance there's redemption he will take your name out of the book of slaves. Those who are slaves of Satan. And slaves of occultism. And slaves of evil power. He will give you redemption. He will bring your name in the book of life. In that deliverance there is healing. Every sickness in your body. Praise the Lord you are healed tonight. I said praise the Lord you are healed tonight. There's healing in that deliverance. What they call incurable disease, it will be healed out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. In that deliverance, there is the breaking of every yoke and curse. Any curse that came upon you from childhood, Jesus will break it tonight. They say this is a particular curse. And it's on the community in which you came from. And he said, look at anybody that came from that place. That yoke has been on them. Tonight the Lord will single you out. And the Lord will break that curse away from your life tonight. In that deliverance there is protection. Protection from the powers of darkness. Praise the Lord you are free tonight. And then there is preservation. Your life will not be destroyed by any enemy. You will live your full life and your full days here on earth. And then promotion has come to you. I said promotion has come to you. And you're going to have it in Jesus' name. But you know, it's for the people that make up their minds. I have decided the decision of a lifetime is a decision you turn away from everything that has brought defilement in your life. It's a decision of all repentance. Lord, I come just as I am. I've been defiled. I've been made dirty. But now I hear that Jesus will wash me that Jesus will cleanse me. That his blood will take all my sins away. Jesus, I come. I come to him as the Messiah. And Daniel tells us he will finish up all your sin. He will cancel all the guilt of your sin. And then he will turn you unto righteousness. The door is open tonight. And you say, Lord, I come. As you say, Lord, I come. As you say, Lord, I come. A man of decision. A woman of decision. As you stand up. And you come through that door of decision. Deliverance will meet you on the way. Salvation will meet you on the way. Dominion will meet you on the way. We can solve all that problem tonight. All the attack we can solve tonight. All the yoke can be broken tonight. The peace of God can come to you tonight. Just one step. Just one step. A step of decision. Going through the open door. Are you there? I said, are you there? I said, are you there? What are you? Press that hand up. Wave that hand at me. You'll come through the door. Deliverance will come to you. Dominion will come to you. It's about the eyes closed. 
This is the moment of decision. This is the moment of entry through that door. The door of deliverance. The door of salvation. And the door of redemption. You are there. And you want this Jesus. To become your companion. You want this Jesus. To be the one that will be with you in the fire. Will be with you in the furnace. Will be with you in the flame. And no evil power will be able to conquer you anymore. You want to be converted unto Christ. You want to give your life to Christ. You want all your sins to be forgiven. And you want to be saved. And you want to say, Lord, here I am. I'm taking a decision. A decision of a lifetime. Wherever you are, joyfully, happily, courageously, confidently, you raise up your hand. Man of decision. Woman of decision. What are you? Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand very well. Let the people know. Tonight I make up my mind. Tonight I make a decision. I'm going with Jesus. He will be my savior. He'll be my redeemer. He'll be my companion. I will never leave him. He will never leave me. I'm going to put my hand in his hand. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Very simple. Lord, I come. Say that. Lord, I come. Out of darkness. Out of defilement. Out of every evil sin. Out of every sin. That I have committed. Lord, I come. I come through the door. The door of decision. Decision of a lifetime. I will not go back into occultism. I will not go back into darkness. I will not go back into, into any sin. I come to Christ. Be my savior. I believe you died for me. I believe my sins are forgiven now. I believe I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Raise up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have said, those servant will come to you. You will for no reason cast away. These have come. They come out of defilement. They come through the door of decision. And they come to Jesus to be their savior. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Save them in Jesus' name. Let your peace come to them. Let your salvation come to them. Let total redemption come to them. Confirm it in their heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Salvation has come. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. It is done. I said it is done. That decision is a decision of a lifetime. If you are there, you are waiting, waiting for a miracle. I said, praise the Lord. The power of God is going to touch you right now. Who is that God? Nebuchadnezzar asked. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered. Our God is able. Somebody there say, my God is able. That sickness in your body, that's a little thing. Your God is able. That infirmity, that's a little thing. Our God is able. And that uh, stumbling block around you there, God is able. Problem, God is able. Solution has come. Miracle has come. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. The power that breaks every yoke has come. Identify the problem in your body. On your family. On your life. And lay one hand there. And raise up the other hand. After the final amen. Check up. Power will be there. Father in Jesus name. I thank you tonight. 
We bless your name tonight. You are mighty God. You are a powerful God. You are a faithful God. You are able. You are able. You are able. I come to you on behalf of your people. Break every yoke in Jesus' name. Destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name. Set everyone free tonight. Set everyone free tonight. And take them out of their dungeon of problems in Jesus' name. Manifest your power upon their lives. Set them free. Deliver them completely. Lord, I pray from the top of the head to the tip of their toe. Manifest your power in Jesus' name. That spirit of insanity and madness. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That swelling in your body. I command that swelling, vanish away in Jesus' name. That pain or sickness in your body. Sickness come out there. Pain be removed right there. Lord, touch them and heal them in Jesus' name. Whatever is called incurable disease, whatever it is, tuberculosis, or cancer, or ulcer, or diabetes, whatever it may be, Lord, touch them right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. All the oppression of the enemy. All the curse and all the yoke. All the manifestation of occultic power. Break everything. Destroy everything. Remove everything. Set everyone free. Break everyone's yoke. Remove everyone's chain. Heal the incurable in Jesus' name. Touch everybody right now. Set everyone free right now. Open those blind eyes. Touch those blind eyes. Those dim eyes they will see in Jesus' name. Those who have stroke. Those who have stroke. And those who are lame. Paralyzed. Send forth your power. That they rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb. I pray you touch their vocal cords. And touch their eardrums. And do a creative work. That they will hear. They will speak in Jesus name. Where there's barrenness. Cancel that barrenness. Any kind of mountain there Lord. Remove that mountain. Miracle to the right. Miracle to the left. Miracle to the center. Miracle at the back. Miracle at the front. Miracle everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Healing everywhere. Signs and wonders everywhere. Confirm it right now. Thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Your miracle has got to you. You have got it. I said you have got it. I said you have got it. Check up. It's right there. You'll never be the same again. Deliverance and dominion. That's now your lot. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Moduka lowo Lohun. Lati bi odun keta ti mo ti wa nu e stroke lo se mi mo de ti ngba pa mi mo ti ngbese mi oluwa de ti se yarun na ye mi ara mi de ti nwa le mo se de bi leni o tun yato si bi mo se de bi e ba mi dupe lodo olohun oluwa o se o mo dupe praise the lord thank you hallelujah the stroke mission mama what in hallelujah keep on checking your own too wanna yare wo Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The Lord is good. All the time. My 
name is Prophet Tunde Dale Geshi. I'm here to give a wonderful testimony because it has occurred to me for the past three years now. I have a chest pain. Anytime I go to the doctor, he gives me drugs, and after that drugs, when I use it finish, it will occur again. Ah. So my mom said, maybe I should go to the doctor again. I said, since after the, after the drug, it's going to occur back. So I said, the God is going to do it anytime. But today, when I hear that there's a revival program here, it was one of my colleagues in my church, because I'm not part of Deeper Life. So they invited me to come down to this place. And when the man of God said we should lay in our hands on any part that is paining us, I put my right hand because I believe that the right hand of God is very powerful. That is why I use my, all, my right hand to lay on my chest. But after the prayer, I feel an every breeze rotating there before I cannot move like this. But now you can see me rotating. Seriously. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Our God is good. My name is Sister Nat. Uduak Nat Nwatu. I'm from Ilupeju Estate District. Ojolowo Group. Praise the Lord. I want to give God the glory for this privilege of standing before you, my brethren, to testify about the goodness of God, how God broke the yoke of barrenness in our family after 17 years of marriage. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! My sisters and my brothers, if you are there and you are a member of this church or you are an invitee, don't go anywhere because God is here. And as you have come tonight, God will remove all your burdens in Jesus' name. We got married in the year 1997. After the first year of trying, we started going to hospitals. And we were told that there was nothing wrong with us. You know, after some time, we started going to another hospital, from one hospital to the other, and they kept telling us the same thing. That there was nothing wrong with my husband, and there was nothing wrong with me. So, at the point, you know, a particular hospital said, maybe I will have to open you up to check the inside, because I can't see what is wrong with you. I don't know why you are not pregnant. By the grace of God, we met with our Father in the Lord who prayed with us, and we left. So, I, we kept serving God, and from that point, I just made up my mind. I wasn't going anywhere anymore. So, we kept serving the Lord. Then, in the year, 19, uh, year 2004, while we were preparing for our Easter retreat, 18th of, 18th of March, to be precise, the Lord, I, I had a dream. In that dream, our Father in the Lord here yeah, asked us to go and evangelize and tell people and bring people to DLCC that Jesus Christ was coming to DLCC. So we, I went, I was among those that went to go and tell people to come to DLCC that Jesus was coming to DLCC. Many people came. But after a while, I, in that dream, I saw that a lot of people were going, going back. They were, going, they were impatient and they started moving out of the hall of meeting. And I saw a particular boy that I invited for that program. The boy was going, and I ran after him in that dream. While I was at that, uh, in that place, where the, where the campus camp is right now, that was where I, I, I caught up with the boy. I was telling him, don't go back, that Jesus will soon come. Don't go back, Jesus will soon come. While I was talking with the boy, there was an announcement at the gate that Jesus Christ was already at the camp, at the gate of our camp. That people that are going should come back. But some people came back, some were still going. I was still holding this boy, talking. Suddenly, I saw a very bright light by my side. The light was so bright that I heard a voice, and I turned, and it was the Lord. And he said, because you are doing this for me, you'll be pregnant. So I didn't, I, I was so overwhelmed, I couldn't look at him because of the brightness, and he left. And the, when he left, he moved straight to the hall of meeting. I was so overjoyed. I, I held the boy and I was running. And I was singing this song in my mouth. The, the song in our hymn book, Psalm 58, stanza 2. I never knew this song offhand, this stanza 2 offhand, which says, If for Christ I proclaim the glad story, if I seek for his sheep gone astray, I am sure he will show me his glory. 
when I've gone the last mile of the way. Praise the Lord. That was the song I was singing and I held this young man and I was running. As I was holding him, I was running towards the hall of meeting. There, when I got to the hall of meeting, I saw the Lord Jesus Christ holding our Father in the Lord. And the two of them came out from the behind, behind the pulpit and they came out to address the congregation. And that's how I woke up. And when I woke up, I was overjoyed. I woke my husband and we were rejoicing, praising God. I thought I was going to be pregnant the following month, but that did not happen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. We waited one year, two years. We didn't see anything, but I knew that it was not an ordinary dream, that it was God that gave me that revelation. So when it was two years, we, we met with our father in the Lord, and I shared the testimony with him. And he encouraged me and he said, my sister, that God who has given you that promise will not fail you. He will do it. And I went away with that. Praise the Lord. That was year 2006. So the, we kept waiting and we kept waiting and time was going because I was already in my 40s. For the people of the world, it was a forgotten issue, but I knew that God was going to do it. To be precise, January 5 of 2014, I had another dream. This time around, I saw the Lord in our home, in our home, as if my husband went for fellowship and he was just coming in, and I saw him. He said one word, I just came to visit you people. Praise the Lord. So when he said that, I just woke up and I rejoiced and I wrote it down, that the Lord visited us on the 5th of January, year 2014. So shortly after that, I became, I became uh, sick and I was taken from one hospital to the other. They could not really, you know, say what was wrong. At the point, I kept, you know, having these complications and all that. But while we were preparing for our Easter retreat, I became seriously sick. I could not even walk on my own. But the Lord helped me. Praise the Lord. When we got to the camp, that very night, the first night, the first night, if you can remember the message, a night to be remembered. That was the title of the message our Father in the Lord gave for that Easter retreat of year 2014. And he told us in that message that that night, will, that you will never forget that night in the, all the days of your life. And I held it. So when he, he said, he mentioned Exodus chapter 3 verse 7. The Lord had already given me this word at home while we were preparing for the retreat. He merely mentioned that I knew that it was my whole night to be remembered. So I held on to the word of God. As, the father, as our father and the Lord gave the message that night and he prayed. That was how all the complications and everything left. And I became healed. In fact, as I left that place, this year I'm talk talking to you. I've been to three different hospitals. They even sent my blood sample to South Africa for screening and all that. They could not really see what was wrong with me. But the Lord healed me that night. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The following month was the month of May. And I took in for this child. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. The Lord did it for me. I took him for this child, and I carried the pregnancy. There was no issue. There was no stress. Even at, at my age, the Lord did it, and I had a perfect delivery. And this is the child. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! My sisters, don't go anywhere for because God is here. The Lord who has visited me, he will visit you, even as you wait upon him. Praise the Lord! Praise Pastor Jesus. My brethren, my name is Brother Nkendlim Ignatius Maduche. I'm from Ishaga District in Idioro Group. Um, my testimony, if I start to narrate it here today, I don't think there will be enough time for me to do that. But all the same, I have to brief it because of time. Uh, I was sick for many years. I can tell you when I know good health was well, when I was eight years old. But in the year 2013, which is my 53 years of age, brothers, all for type years was full of sickness. From my, I used to go from one place to another, from one church to another. Any place you say I should go to get healed, I'm always be there. But to not avail. On the February 2013, somebody invited me to the Palais. I'm not a Palais member. I'm a Catholic. 
by faith. So somebody invited me, one of my friends, pastor. He saw what I'm going through. He said, brother, I, will, I would like to invite you to our program at the LCC. But through that time, but I tell you, I was dying gradually. So, okay, I followed him to DLCC with my wife. That was in February. Then in March, I couldn't attend the program. Uh, on uh, April, I attended the program. On that April, I was just a walking corpse. I can tell you because each step I made, it seems to me that should be the last step on earth. On that very morning, I attended the program. I went to my doctor for treatment because I'm always in the hospital. He told me, Mr., I don't want to tell you this for, long, uh, for a long time. Your heart has been damaged. I said, eh? He said, your heart is damaged already. But I'm just trying to see what I can do. That was in the morning time. He gave me some injections, which I went home with. I slept. I asked my wife, once it's 5 o'clock in the evening, wake me up. I want to, I want to go to the LCC. Immediately to 5, she wake me up. Then we went to the LCC. At the time we get there, I was just driving. I wasn't myself. When I get to the LCC, my, all, all I have in mind is that let me go to the hall of, inside the hall church. And I died there. That's the place I wanted to die. But by the time I get there, I didn't die. I was sat down, and I was listening to one man giving testimony, Mr. Balogu, how God saved him. He was almost dead. They dropped me at the security gate. The man of God came there to say, my child, you're here. I said, ah, if such a thing can happen to such a, such a person, my own may be, will not be different. Immediately, our daddy came to this pulpit. He said, there's a man here. I'm just trying to cut everything short. He said, there's a man here who have hole in his heart. You're here completely, and your healing is permanent. My brothers and sisters, it seems that something follow me. Strength come back to me. I am full of strength. And I told my wife, look, I don't know what is happening to me. I'm okay. I have the strength now. I can stand up. I stood up. I sat down. I stood up. I sat down. I stood up. I sat down. I said, okay, I'm okay. I was, I was so full of joy. So when I was called to come and give testimony, my wife said, you should not go home with this testimony. Go and give it so that this will not come back to you again. Then I went to, because I'm not used to standing in the crowd to address people. I haven't done it before. So immediately, I went to the to the interview, they interviewed me, I told them, my brother I told you, for good for five years, I have no, no good health. That very day, the Lord restored my health. I did not die, because my intention was, when I get to the UFCC, if I enter inside the hall and die there, that was, that's what I have in mind, that I was, I, I'm okay. But I did not die up to, since 2013 till now, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I give the glory, I give the Lord all the glory. If I have opportunity, to hold my dad in the Lord. I will hold him because he's a carrier of anointing. The anointing is too much on him. This is too much on him. I believe everybody here, the anointing will fall on you and you're probably not, you're not listening again in Jesus' name. That in the Lord. I thank you so much. Let God continue to use you mightily to deliver people because there's too much souls over there. I praise God for you. Thank you so much, sir. Praise the Lord.